Hello, I'm Russ Gibson and this is my presentation for COMS 520 for Dr. Kelly. Tonight I'm going to talk about concertive control theory, which is one of the theories mentioned under the organizational control theory in the textbook. Concertive control theory was largely developed by Philip Tompkins and George Cheney. They saw it as one of five methods uh, observable in organizations that leaders use to control the rest of the organization. Um, just to go through those five organizational theories or organizational methods, control methods. Um, first we have simple control which is a direct use of power. Um, this is something that they saw a lot exemplified in the apprentice of, um, and master uh, style of, of work where people were trained and under the direct supervision and guidance and, and sometimes physical control of a, um, of a trainer or teacher, someone that's employing them to work. Um, Eventually, with the rise of the Industrial Revolution, it gave way to technical control, where control was gained by the organizational leaders um, by controlling the technology, the actual devices that were used in making the widget or um, in providing the service. One example is the um, factory machinery. You can't, um, not having access to the factory off hours or um, being able really to have the authority to change the way they work or do anything like that makes the leaders of the organization who do have that authority um, gives them a lot of control over the lower level members of the organization that are actually performing the service or making the widget. Um, finally, after, um, a after that kind of rose to prominence, we saw a little bit more of the um, rise of, of what Weber described as a bureaucratic control, um, which is control based on company policies and rules. Um, this is the dominant uh, form that we see now taken in organizations. Personally, I have a, in my organization, I have about 150 pages of policy manuals that um, regulate everything from the clothing I wear to um, the number of hours I can be called uh, after having completed a shift before they can call me back to do more work if they need me. Um, fourth, uh, we see cultural control, which uh, is concerned with organizing and uh, making an organization um, cohesive and coherent around a, a set of values and common practices. And then we get to five, the conservative control theory. Conservative control works by using interpersonal relationships and teamwork to regulate organizational behavior. Um, it works uh, basically the CEO or the leaders of the organization create a mission statement or a vision statement where they outline the values of the organization um, and, and the different behaviors that they believe will contribute to the success of the organization. And then through hiring practices um, and through trainings, especially um, the socialization of the employee, teaching them kind of the way things work uh, in the company, um, they use interpersonal relationships um, and, and peer pressure to an extent to um, to foster those behaviors that are contributing to the success of the company. We call that normalizing the behaviors. Um, so why did we go to this? Uh, it seems like the organizational leaders are giving up a lot of control of their organization and, and that can be scary. Um, so what makes it so attractive? Well, for one thing, the bureaucratic control method uh, gets to be onerous. As I said, I have 150 pages of, of policies that dictate what I can do and on the job and, and some in some aspects what I can do off the job. Um, but in a business environment where agility, being able to make decisions quickly, we're taking input from a consumer level and uh, making changes to, to meet the consumers, better meet the consumers' needs. Um, in an environment where that takes a long time to go up through different strata in a bureaucratic system of control um, and then come back down as an effective change in the organization, that can take a long time. Um, and sometimes the organization has rules about how frequently you can make rules and that slows things down even more. Um, so what you see is that large bureaucratic systems just take too long to make decisions in, in today's business environment. Um, so a couple of business consultants uh, started pushing for flattened organizational structures. Um, systems where you have your upper level leaders that are creating the vision, creating the behavior, um, and kind of providing a vision for the, for the organization. But the everyday job of, of creating the widget or performing the service and, and um, making 
uh, rules for how the team's going to behave and what the workflow is going to look like where those decisions are left up to the employees. That gives you a couple of different things. First, by flattening your structure, you eliminate um, a large middle section of employment that's taking a, a lot of salary. So you save money. It's actually less expensive. Um, companies such as Google and Xerox and Coors Brewing have all done this. Um, and what you see is they've got highly motivated teams, um, pe individuals that are very highly motivated to be successful. And being on a team with them uh, lends itself to peer pressure that the other members of the team want to perform as high as well. Um, it also is described as Chang and Tompkins as being very subtle. Um, we're talking about rules and reinforcement instead of having a closed door meeting with a supervisor or a boss, you're actually a co-worker's coming up and saying, hey, you were a couple minutes late for that meeting, everything everything okay? And it sounds like they're just checking up on you, but they really are, are sanctioning a behavior that was not, success, not helpful for the team. Um, so in that way, you get this unsolicited advice, maybe in a little email from a friend or a reminder, um, and it's control. It's controlling your behavior. Um, now, largely this works because no one, no one wants to be that guy in an organization. Um, you don't want to be the person, the only person in your team that performs at a high level that's consistently showing up late for meetings. Um, maybe you've dressed too casually for work. Um, you start to notice how everybody else is dressing and how everybody else is ready for the meeting about five minutes ahead of time and just waiting in the room. Um, and those become normalizing behaviors where you say, oh, this is, this is how it's done in this company. So you start to adopt those behaviors as your own. Um, one of the largest, uh, without having formal authority, one of the biggest problems that, that seems to just be the white elephant in the room is slackers. What do you do with a team member that, that doesn't perform, that's, that's content to ride along on everybody else's coattails? Well, hopefully you've hired to select people that will be motivated and, and want to perform as part of the team and will adopt those norms um, of behavior that will be successful. Um, if not, unfortunately, sometimes the teams do develop systems um, by which they pass up disciplinary action to upper level management or uh, work it out amongst themselves and people uh, can be dismissed um, all the way through you know, formal reprimands and, and you know, maybe fines or, or whatever up through, um, through dismissal. Um, so there are conservative controls actually been used in, in organizations where those kinds of systems have developed by themselves. So it's cheaper and it's faster. So, but what are the downsides of conservative control theory? Um, well, first, you have to have very strong alignment with organizational values. This can be easier uh, in an environment where there's a lot of labor available and you can be very selective about who you hire. Uh, if there's not, and you're just looking for whoever you can get, you're gonna get people um, that sometimes don't fully align to your and don't socialize to the values of your organization. And then you're gonna see, um, you can see problems such as in a police department where you have norms of behavior that maybe run counter to your stated vision and, and goals. Um, my research project was uh, based on the influence that conservative control theory has on millennials um, who are really uh, connected and interpersonal relationships are something that's very important to them. Um, so this could be a very effective control method for employees in the future. Um, but if you've got employees that are connected more to each other than they are to the organization's values, you could develop normal behaviors that are counterproductive. Uh, so as I said, can organize Organizational theory, control, uh, conservative control theory, is based on the idea that um, no one wants to be that guy and they use interpersonal relationships to create norms of behavior inside the team. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have further questions, there's more information contained in the PowerPoint that you'll see below. Thank you.